this is the beginning of a two part. This is a part one of the two part. Um, we're talking about this um, nautical, beachy vibe, sort of barnwood planking that I did on a table. Um, it's Iron Orchid Designs um, barnwood plank stamp. Um, and it's a technique that I do back here on the wall. Mm -hmm. But I also did it in a little different flair. Um, this time it had a great response and people were asking for tutorials. I had done a live not thinking about all this um, and it was just a, for the, the stamp. And then people were asking for, well, how was the colors laid out? Um, so long story short, I just have to piece this together for you. And it's, this is gonna be the part where we lay down the colors. And then make sure after this video, if you're interested in the stamp, search um, out for um, part two of this. And it'll show you how I do my stamping. Uh, so it looks a little realistic and, and little pointers with the Barnwood like stamp. So if you have any questions along the way, make sure you comment down below. You can message us through our website at c4am.com. Uh, you can also uh, reach us through um, Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram. They're all slash Seaporium. Let's get started. Hi there. This is a video that quite a few have asked for. Um, we recently did um, the Barnwood Planks table that had that sort of nautical plank look where they had alternating pretend boards. Um, and so uh, I kind of did a, a live video that explained the stamping, but I didn't explain what went on underneath the stamping. So it's been a long day and I'm hoping I'm gonna remember all the steps for you. Um, so let's get started. Um, so let's see, don't mind me. So what I've done is, let's see. I've got this board pretty much gonna bother me that no nope, that didn't help matters and he did it Let's see if we can move this over the dog bed is in the way okay I just took this piece of cardboard and that's better and base coated it I didn't have a board um, without having to get the table saw out and dig it out of the back and we had a busy day but this will give you the idea of what I did for the coffee table um, so we, I have already measured out the width of the barnwood plank. If I measure it out from the little seam to the little seam is four and a half inches. So after base coating, I used in that table was the, uh, Wise Owl one hour enamel uh, in the gray linen. I know it's backwards because I did the forward facing video so I can see what's in view. Um, this was a project piece because I'm trying to pick a new brand and, and that table got picked for this project. And I had to tell you the truth, had gone back and forth, back and forth on what I was going to do with it and this is what I ended up with. I was happy with it. I'm glad you all liked it. Anyways, back to the subject. <laughs> we have four and a half inches from the seam to the seam. So I measured out four and a half inches, 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 and I'm gonna show you. I mean, you could sit here and be very particular and draw out a line with a straight edge and be all prim and proper about it. And then here's a little trick of the trade. Watercolor pencil. I have a few of these. This is my favorite because it's just a light color, but it's, um, it's dark enough to show up on most colors. Um, or bright enough on other colors. This is like an aqua color. Um, the nice thing about this is because it's, you can wipe it off with water. Um, and we're working with water-based paints. This is really handy tools to have around. Um, and all I did was tick off four and a half inches, four and a half inches over from this line, right? And you have to remember, we're going on the inside of this line and this one's gonna be the next round. This will be one we're painting now, and this is going to be for the next round, and then etc., etc., etc. So I have my little tick marks. I know you probably can't see them there, um, and I would have uh, on the table. I did my ticks at more towards the end, 
and maybe the middle. There we go. Oh, and here I go. Messing it up already on you folks. Gotta go the other side of the line. All right, there's my tick. And I'm pulling the tapes hard and straight. Another trick of the trade, when you're using tape, you know, this is cardboard, it'll never be 100%. Um, you're gonna take your nail and just go down the very edge of the tape to burnish it. Although we really don't need to do that for what I'm doing, except for the the, the blue aqua whatever board. That was, um, I did do a wash of color. Um, okay. Gonna be official use your nail okay if you don't have nails use a popsicle stick that'll work just fine so we have our lengths done and then you want to think about where your joints will be if, it, if um, someone's doing a, um, a line of, of planks they're gonna stagger the joints so eeny meeny this you get to pick wherever you want. Say this is my tabletop. I might do one over, let's see here. Then this one could be over here. And let's say, okay, we'll just do this one even kind of in a row here. Boom, 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 boom. Just for simplicity's sake. Right, got, got our joints. These are gonna be for this side. Don't forget to move these, because this side will be missing a portion of it. Watch me do that later, huh? Been one of those days. So the colors I'm gonna use, the first one I started with was uh, the Wise Owl also, but this is the chalk synthesis paint. It's got a lot of clay in it. Um, and this is the um, Grecian clay. Uh, that was the, the gray version. This was predominantly done with the Wise Owl Grecian gray, but there was also a little bit of the Paint Couture British gray. And um, my paint line, the Chateau Chic chalk furniture paint in Sea Cliff. And then at the very end, just sort of really lightly dry brush seafoam white. All right, and then we use a lot of the same colors um, for the white, but I went very light on, on these colors. I went more so with these, a little bit of this, and a lot of the white. And a nice thing for this technique is it's a lot of dry brushing. It dries quick, um, and it gives you that, that strie look that wood has. Um, and I save these, you know, this is a chip brush. This is just a beat up brush. Save these old brushes, folks. They're very handy. Actually, technically, when I started off, I was using this one. It had a little bit of varnish left on it and it had these little stiff peaks on it. It was perfect, actually. But now it's, the varnish is all cleaned off and it's not as nice as it used to be. So let's just start. We're gonna do, let's start that gray color. This is the British gray from Paint Couture. It's a, sort of a more of a bluey gray than the Grecian clay from Wise Owl. If you want to just get other paints, it doesn't have to be these paints. Mm -hmm. The idea is if I was doing um, a faux bois look, it would be uh, layers of glazes building up uh, the depth that wood has. All right, so let's just pick a brush. All right. And again, I can take, um, I have a palette here where you can use that. You can use a little piece of paper towel, whatever. And I'm using the lids because if I'm gonna pull some and I have other paints on my brush, I don't wanna use it on my can. I might even dip some and put them on a plate, but I'm too lazy to do that tonight. Um, and I'm just gonna start streaking on this color. You're not gonna see a big difference. First of all, I only put one coat of the Wise Owl um, enamel on here. So this weird thing is paint left over. It just didn't cover that very well in the one coat. 
I'm just trying to give you an idea what the process was. Okay, that's not even dry yet. And I'm gonna go and add some of the sea cliff. Again, I'm gonna grab from the lid and streak some of that on. And if I get a part that's on like too heavy, oh, too heavy, you know what? Take a rag and pull it out. Okay? It's paint, people. It's not, not the end of the world. All right, so we've got a little bit of different colors happening there. Now we're gonna come in, add a little bit of the Grecian. build all the different little imperfections that wood has. It's not symmetrical in any way. And again, I'm just going to drag this through. And I'm going to keep pulling because I don't want it too linear because we're going to be adding a lot of lines with the stamps. I just want to start adding some movement in the direction of the wood, the per se wood. All right. And you can keep playing with this till you get something that you like. So you know what, I want to add maybe a little more of the tan color, which is the sea cliff. Too bad there so far. Work it out with the rag. There. Done deal. <coughs> and then we would go on and do this to another board. Pick another one. Eeny meeny. This is something you pick how you want to stagger them. Uh, see that? We'll do a white. We'll do maybe the aqua and the tan. Uh, let's do this. <coughs> this time it's the Grecian clay that's left over in my brush. That's okay. Oops. Oops. <laughs> like I said, it's been a long day. Okay, there's the British gray, pink couture. Now I'll just flip this lid over and get the sea cliff. Okay, and let's do more of the Grecian. down. Too heavy on the Grecian. You can always break up the lines a little bit very softly. Not, no pressure at all. Okay. You just do this until you get something you like. You can come back over this. All right. And just because I don't normally like to be this predictable, um, but just for the sake of demonstration, we're going to do it over here again. Oh, Ooh, a giant mosquito bug just flew over on me. It flies down my shirt, ladies, you might hear me yell. Okay. And it might not.
not be pretty. There we go. And the Grecian. Yeah. My husband walking out on the door there. He's been very patient with me today. But I wanted to get this video done. We're not going to be in the shop tomorrow. And I know you ladies have been asking, so I don't want to disappoint you. Doing one more tan. You're just playing with this until you get something you like. Okay, is this dry yet? Not really. We're gonna hit this with a blow dryer. Sorry, it's gonna get a little loud. This part, I wanna do really dry. Cardboard. It will be such a pretty piece of cardboard after. Okay, we have some. Oh, this good spray is just really causing trouble. Now it's underneath the, the ruler making a mess over here. All right. Let's just put it back in its lid. What a novel idea. Wow. Yay me. All right, so we can take like another brush. Let's try this brush, see what it does. Oh, and of course this is going to be a nice stuck. This is um, my the line I've been carrying. We're selling out is the Chateau Chic Seafoam White. I really like the brand. Um, just no one knows about them. All right. Just lightly tapped in there. This is going to be all out dry brush in the white. Let's see where that brings us. Just to add a little movement. And what was what I did in the in the table actually, worth mentioning here is I did um, the because I told you I did I've been trying different techniques trying to get something I liked, and so um, when I came up, I knew I was going to do this. I did a coat crosswise of the of the way I wanted to, to paint it and then I did the coat um, with the grain and the undercoat where the crosswise was did come up in some of the dry brush so see how and like the cardboard is showing up in this case but I did get some of the streaks in the dry brushing and then we can kind of tone that down too if we want with this brush there really dry and again it's not the same look because it's on cardboard and not wood and again dry very dry and just basically almost sometimes I was almost scratching it on just to get there that's it now we can move on to another color eeny meeny folks Let's see, we'll do the white. Oh, look at, see? That's all right. We're gonna be putting on all these layers with the white, so that won't show. Don't forget to move the tape. I actually did that a couple times on the table where I didn't move the tape. <laughs> Oops! And sand it down linear and then dry brushed a little bit on the end and you couldn't even tell. All right. Let's do the white. This was more, I think, of the, let's see. Yeah, I don't wanna, 
contaminate the whole jar. Just want it sitting on the lid. Okay. This, again, will be our white strip here. that keeps getting into everything. All right. On the actual table, was um, the Jolie gesso white instead of the seafoam white? Um, but I had a lady fall in love with the, we used it on a desk that we sold today. So I, Gave her what I had left of the, of the Jolie. All right, now, unlike the other time where we went light with the white, this time we're gonna go a little bit heavier with the white, but still pretty much dry brushing it. And you just keep playing with these colors. If it gets too heavy with the white, streak on another color. Maybe wait for it to dry and really just streak on dry brush. There is no rhyme, there is no reason to this. And you don't want it to be. It won't look very realistic at all if it's all perfect. See this? Very little bit. And again, you don't want it too streaky because you're gonna be doing the lines with the stamp. You just want to add depth. You want to add the built-in layers that the wood has. So you'll probably wait for this to dry more because now we're just blending the white. Now will get dried more. Let's do another. Boy, someone's really chiming in. Um, messenger. Let's see. That would be a Kindle. And the British Grey. And the White. Keep doing this. And actually, you could wait to do the dry brushing of the white on the darker part if this is the, the pattern you're going to do um, when you're doing the white on your whiteboard. Okay, that's still wet, but I don't want this to be a really long video. Blah, 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 blah. Let's let that dry so we can tape over it. Like I said, again, I would wait put another coat of white on. And don't forget the details. If you've got a piece, if you noticed on the table where the drop leaves um, fall, you know, were down, and you have the exposed edges, what I did literally took those edges, you know, and, you know, let's see, will this show, like, and went boom, 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 with the different colors. Just to add that same movement, and then after the stamping was done, I took a fine brush and dipped it into the ink and pulled the seams down. So, if that makes any sense to you. Um, we're going to move these. The other sides. And again, I took a little more time. Um, I was, my store was open, the paint was drying better, yada, yada, yada. 
Okay. That's not very white. That's okay. This is gonna bother me. I want you to see what this looks like brighter. That's me being anal. All right, where's my palette? Okay. And again, it's cardboard, so what you're seeing all those little do jabs. This is how it goes on on the wood, just so you know. And I hope this doesn't throw you off too much that we're doing this on cardboard. But it's the same steps. You might just do a little bit like that. You can cross over here, whatever. It's not science. Get any idea better. Okay, now to give you an idea of the colors we use. Let's see where we're gonna go over here, maybe. I didn't do the last white, that's okay. Okay. Let's do the blue, because that was kind of interesting. So the blue, first thing I did was streak down really like very lightly this um, pink couture sea glass, it's a pretty aqua more the green tone of aqua than the, the one I'm used to using. But it was a good foundation for what I was doing. So let's see. This is really wispy. That'll be perfect for what we're doing. Okay. That's it. Boom, boom, boom. Not a lot of this. Just something underneath. What else is new? Playing in the sandbox, folks. We're playing in the sandbox. That's what my friend says, and it's so true. It's so true. 
All right, this part I'm gonna let, I'm gonna dry. I want these down and solid for what kind of nuts. Natives are restless out on the street, I see. <laughs> All right, so this, I think we're gonna do a little bit of the, um, the British gray. Give it more of the blue tone underneath. I think that's what I did, actually. I don't know if that's really gonna make a difference to tell you the truth. Maybe it was um, the sea cliff. That would be Joe, my patient husband. What do you have for breakfast? Yeah, <laughs> that's about it. Okay, just a little bit of different color coming through. This was her dinner in a movie, by the way. <laughs> Show them how this is done, and I'm not going to be in tomorrow. Maybe just a streak of this. I don't think I did this on the original, but it won't hurt. Yeah. 25 for four. Get them. Yeah. Yeah. We need four chairs for the table. Um, all right. So this one is the wash. And I literally, oh, I didn't grab the right brush for this. I don't think it's going to matter because it's going on so watery. Dipping, it's, I'm dipping in water. That'll be good for this table, I think. It's not perfect, but we're never, by the time we find perfect, we could be old and gray. Even more watery. We want this to be a wash. Where's my oh, palette's right here. See some of these other colors coming from below. And again, you do it to however you like it. is just a little bit brighter. It is our Chateau Chic chalk furniture paint in the aquamarine, by the way. I don't think I got to fit in that. Those are cute. Yeah? Didn't pick up, I think. They're 25 each. No, like a pair. Really? Oh, blue there. There. That's enough movement for this. I like that a lot, actually. And then you keep going. And then 
Oh, actually, this part after this dries, you go back with the white, you know, maybe a little bit of the gray, and you dry brush very lightly after it's dry. And uh, that is it. We stamp over it after. You got your joints to go with the joints there. <laughs> By the time you get to another section, the other section is going to be dry. And to tell you the truth, if you had to do, you know, the full bois, you use the wood graining tools and all that, you got to use your blazes. Otherwise, paint is going to be too harsh. Um, this is such an easy way to get a look, and it's easy to fix. But it's not blazes. tan was just, again, a lot of this Grecian clay, a little bit of the British, and quite a bit. The British are coming. Yeah, that's what they said. Of the sea clip. This one is very similar to this board with the Grecian clay, the British clay, and the sea cliff. But this one, we're reversing the predominance of the Grecian clay with the sea cliff. Switching those two around. And again, once it's dry, it's just white. Dry brush it with the white. Boom, boom, boom. You know, you could add little streaks of the Grecian, whatever. If this is your, your work. This is what you're doing. And then when you stamp over it, oh, look at what I did. Ha! Like I told you, I would do it. Since it's still wet. I'm gonna hit it like this. I knew I would do that. I am predictable this way. Two boards. We're gonna to remember to do it to this board. Oh look, it didn't burnish the tape down. Look at that folks. Alright, let's do the British gray. on a rag and go in with a lot more of the sea cliff, the tan. Again, if you cut the harsh lines by very lightly, going at angles if you want, and then brushing it out. And then, again, use your white. And kind of go over all the areas once everything's dry and just kind of dry brush, scrub some of the white, you know, for some highlights. And that's Tango. That's not some creature. 
our shop dog. He's been on prednisone for uh, allergies or whatever, and so he's uh, <laughs> he's been a little more vocal lately, but he's usually pretty vocal anyways. That's our boards. The groundwork for the barn wood plank on that casual nautical table. That's what I get for not burnishing my teeth down on cardboard. <laughs> but you get the idea. And if you have any questions, you know how to reach me. I hope it was helpful. Oh, look at that. What a mess. I need to get home and get into my pajamas now. Bye. Well, that's that. That's the end of part one. It shows you how the colors go down and, and hopefully it, it was pretty explanatory for you. You can change up the colors. You don't have to do the colors that I did. Um, it's just a general guideline. And it was the colors that I did for that particular uh, table it was very popular. Uh, if you're interested in seeing how the Iron Orchid Design stamps go on, please stay tuned for part two. Go find it. Go find it now.